Hi guys, Brian from Brianized here, and today I just wanted to go over a couple quick things in Capture One. And Capture One is my preferred raw editing software. I know a lot of people are using Lightroom, and I'm trying to explain the differences and show people that there are alternatives to Lightroom out there, and some of them are even better than Lightroom. Somebody's gonna get mad at me for saying that, but it's actually pretty true. So today, here's what we got. This is Capture One, and I'm just gonna bring in one image that I selected to work on to show you some of these differences, and we're gonna go right to the Exposure tab. Now, first thing I wanna show you is, see this white balance here? That does not come naturally on this tab. I actually added that myself, and the way you do that is you go to View, come down to tools, customize tools, add tool to exposure tab, and you can add any tool you want. I like to have white balance on a few of my tabs, just like layers. I put it on a couple of different tabs, but that's actually another video that I pretty much have yet to make, but it's coming. It's coming. I promise. Today, what we're going to talk about is basic stuff. These two tabs here, white balance. That should have blinked. There we go. White balance and exposure, okay? If you can't see where my mouse is, it's right here on white balance and exposure. The first thing I wanna talk about is white balance. Now, Capture One does this thing where it says as shot, and then it has some presets in here. I'm shooting with a Sony a7 III, and I find that some of the presets are a little cold for me, so there's a couple of different ways to set white balance. You can just go right in and change it. Obviously, I was at a daylight already, so I can go to shade. To me, that's way too warm. Some people might like that, though. Cloudy is going to be a little bit less warm. Looks kind of nice. And then, you know, if you're indoors, you might use tungsten or for special effect. And then there's all these others. And flash is very, very going to be very similar to, wow, usually it's similar to uh, daylight. This time it's actually similar to shade or cloudy. But anyway, you can also just use the sliders until you get it the way you want it. The Kelvin temperature is your yellow to blue bias. Okay, so going this way, going to the right, higher numbers makes it more yellow. Going to the left makes it more blue. Usually it's somewhere in the middle. Like that to me is a very natural white balance on this. I might make it just a touch warmer. People tend to like warmer images than cooler images. So just like that. And then the tint is actually your magenta and green. And again, somewhere in the middle is where you want to be. If you make people too magenta or too green, they don't look quite right. So you definitely don't want to do that. And that's the basics of white balance. You can also, if you want to, choose the eyedropper tool here and click on something that you know is white or black. A lot of people don't realize you can do it with black or gray even, like right here. See, that's gray. If I click on that, it white balances the whole image. Not necessarily the best white balance ever, so sometimes it takes clicking around a few different areas. To me, this is a more accurate white balance. I don't find it very pleasing, though. It's a little bit on the green side, and if you notice, right here, that number is at minus 3.8. So if I bring that up to about there, look at that. Pretty much a daylight white balance and good skin tones, right? So... That brings us to the next tab that we're going to work with, and that is exposure, contrast, brightness, and saturation. I'm going to start with saturation because it's probably the most common sense one of the four. First thing I want to do, though, is I'm going to pull my histogram out just so that it's right here and you can all see it. I normally leave it in there, but I want to pull it out just for this exact um, tutorial. And I'm going to pull my exposure tab out as well. This is the one we're going to be working with. Now, you can do that with any of these. You can, re you can move them around. You can put them wherever you want. You can move them to different tabs. However you like to do things is the way Capture One likes to be worked. That's probably my favorite thing about it is every job is a little different. So if I'm doing a wedding, I might put like just the basic stuff all in one place, and then I have another tab that might have more other things that I can use for more advanced type of effects. But for the moment, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you how to use these different tabs. First one is saturation. Now, at its most basic, saturation is the power the color has. How much saturation, how, how vibrant are you making these colors? If you go all the way to the left, you just made a black and white. Go all the way to the right, you just made something that most people probably won't really like. So if you go to about the middle, 
which is where it was. By the way, double clicking on any line puts it back to zero, resets it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation to this. I went to like 19. To me, that's not overdoing it. If, we, if our white balance was not right, this could be overdoing it, okay? So some things do change with that. And that's an important fact too. Get your white balance right first. That's why I like to put that on my exposure tab because even though I'm working on exposure, to me, the white balance does affect everything. So I do that first. Make sure you get your color right first. Then you can go on to other corrective things that you need to do. We're gonna work backwards here. Uh, brightness is something else I look at. The reason I use brightness over exposure is this. If you watch that histogram, see how the black and the white point, meaning here and here, really don't change, okay? Those values are staying roughly the same. Everything in the middle is moving around like crazy, but they're not changing. If I go to exposure, watch what happens. See how it pushed up on the right versus the, the original? That's the difference. Brightness moves the levels around here. These, it moves these values around without affecting your blacks and your whites, where exposure pretty much does that, but also will affect your blacks and your whites, okay? I'm gonna do a levels tutorial also at some point that'll show you how to use levels to do these things. Much more accurate, much more precise way to do it, but in conjunction with these tabs, it actually becomes very, very powerful. So for this image, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring those midtones up a little tiny bit. It doesn't really need it all that much, I just wanna show you how it works. Now exposure, I'm gonna say the exposure is actually pretty right here. The blues have a lot of shadows, okay? That's why there's a blue line there. And, you know, I can bring that up just to show you. But see how far I have to go before they come out of shadows? His uniform actually has quite a bit of shadow detail or shadows in it. So, you know, we can bring that up just a little bit, quarter of a stop. Now, these are in stops. The rest are just a number, whatever they are. But exposure is actually stops. Then that just leaves contrast. Now, contrast is kind of... Oh, it's hard to say. What it does is it makes white whiter and black blacker. If you watch that histogram, it's spreading out those midtones and pushing them towards white and pushing them towards black as I go up. See that? And if you look at the image, it made everything that was dark darker and everything that was light lighter. As I go the opposite way, it pushes everything more towards the midtones. So that way you lose your true white and your true black a little, not completely. But it takes away contrast. This is useful if you're shooting in very stark lighting conditions where you're blowing out some skin tones and things like that. Now, if you watch, if I put this to neutral, that looks pretty good, but I actually like this image right about there, just a little bit down from neutral, and that seems to work well for me. At this point, I would move on to other things that I can do, more creative, maybe even localized adjustments to this image. But that's another video. I just wanted to give you guys a really good, really quick, down and dirty idea of how to use white balance and the exposure tab real quick. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.